Good evening, folks. Hope you're all doing well. A little more awake than I am. Let's see who's lurking today. Asus, Ponder, Pimp, Medellin. Good to see you. Let's get to the list and see who Twitch is going to allow me to say hello to. Dave X Unit. Um, did you want SBG? Don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, GD. Oh, man, there's lots of names that I don't know how to pronounce. So sorry if I skip over you. Infinisil, uh, Memory Haram. Uh, nobody's lemons are Primus and Telly Paul. Uh, good to have you here. And to GDEPYDT. Let me know how to pronounce that and I'm happy to tell you. Um, first time here from DG1SPG. Greetings from Germany. Nice to have you, man. Another German. Hey! So that's cool. Um, yeah, so today we were going to be looking at uh, stencil stuff, which um, ostensibly... Keppel should support, but it's one of those things that got um, hacked in, I think it was around July 2017 or something like this. It was one of those kind of moments where I was just like piling features in. Um, so we don't have any examples for it, and we don't have any kind of tests covering that area in the code base. So yeah, so we're going to try and do something with this today. I'm not sure how it will go. This is very likely to find limitations and bugs in Keppel, so we'll have to see what is happening. But we will be starting. Let's move this guy out of the way. We'll probably need that soon. But let's go and have a look at some information because that's really where we're going to need to start. Should we start here? Well, I mean, I suppose the first thing, at least for Medellin's sake, you'll want to know where we're working today. Uh, and it's not in Keppel tests, that was something else I was looking at. Um, it's in the Keppel examples repo. Um, and there's a branch called uh, Feature Stencil Example. And that's where I'm going to try and do something today. Um, the, the general idea of um, this feature, if I can just bring something up, is that you can create a um, what amounts to a mask in a stencil buffer. And then when you render, um, based on the contents of this buffer, uh, fragments are going to be discarded or kept. So, um, what would be good to do, I mean, what would be a really lazy thing to do, but a good test, is to take two other examples that we've already got. Um, let's say, like, the moving triangles one. Um, let's see if any of this stuff works anymore. Yeah. Um, and then and use this as the mask, and then render something else um, using, yeah, write this into a mask, and then render again using something else, um, and having that mask discard things. That would be a cool test. Uh, we need to find out how any of this stuff really works. I probably knew a bit of it at one point, um, but it's been a long time. Okay, so let me know if um, any text isn't readable. Uh, just shout out and we'll um, we'll carry on. Medellin is on the ball with the links already, so thank you for, um, yeah, as you spotted, um, this is the uh, learnopengl.com um, site, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and we'll also be working from here. Let me post this guy down, and I immediately jump into the wrong buffer. One second. That's the stencil test link for OpenGL Wiki. And we're just going to go through this and get try and get a rough idea of what's going on. So... The stencil test is a per sample operation uh, performed after the fragment shader. So once we've already um, computed all the stuff that we would be writing into a given frame buffer, this is when um, stencil takes over. So the fragment's stencil value is tested against the current it, against the value in the current stencil buffer. So we have a concept of a current stencil buffer somewhere. We a fragment can have a stencil value, which is interesting. I'm not sure what that means. Um, if the test fails, the fragment is culled. And that's cool. So that'll just drop the fragment. I guess it'd be like using discard. Uh, hey, Elevate Simulator. Good to have you. So let's have a look. In order to use a stencil test, the current frame buffer must have a stencil buffer. A uh, stencil buffer is an image that uses a stencil image format. Okay, so let's have a look at... Stencil formats. Well, that that's weird. Okay, there's a stencil format. Um, there are also depth stencil formats. So I suppose, yes. So if, if you have a 
depth buffer and a stencil buffer, you they kind of get combined into a single format. So what I'm hoping is we, we'll do something like make FBO. Um, let me just turn on. Yeah, turn hints. Okay, so down here. Okay, <laughs> I wanted to show the signatures of the function, but make FBO is um, pretty fuzzy. It takes a lot of different permutations of arguments. Um, also, Keppel's documentation is massively lacking around this area. Hey, Jace. Um, so we'll have to kind of make do and uh, raise tickets to fix things as we go. But generally, we make an FBO by specifying some numbers, which are the kind of numbers of the attachments that we want to have. And then we specify D if we want depth, and we can specify S if we want stencil. Um, so then we've got a fully set up FBO. So let's just call this um, temp zero for now. And let's have a look at its attachments. So um, temp zero, like the color attachment is as we'd expect. It's picked a um, RGBA8 um, element type, and it's backed by a texture, of course. And we have um, 320 by 240 of the dimensions, which is this region down here. Um, if we look at depth, we can see that, interestingly, it's a depth stencil. And so if I get S as well, um, we can see that these are probably EQ. So let's have a look at that. Yes. So this depth and stencil are both using the same um, GPU array, uh, which in um, OpenGL parlance is image. And thus, they're, again, they're using this combined format and their dimensions already set up and stuff like that. Um, Medigan saying, you seem to have two microphones that switch automatically. Really? It would be nice to lock onto the one close to you. That is very strange. So wait a second, you're getting a kind of low quality? Oh fuck, what, what is going on? Does it, has it switched before during a stream? Because that's garbage. Let's have a look. Recording. The, apparently at the moment it's using the Samsung, which is right here. Um, and I've, the microphone on the camera is disabled. So I've got three uh, microphones registered on the on the machine. Um, one that's just called microphone, which is disabled. One which is desktop microphone from the LifeCam Studio, which is the one up there, and that's disabled. And then we've got the Samsung CO1U, which is this guy here. I'm wondering if it's just that I'm um, I'm going to move it over here. So. Your, the microphone's right here, so it's off to my side of it. So if when I'm talking to the screen or I'm looking down at the second copy of chat that I have down here, when I'm talking there, maybe it's not reaching the mic in a nice enough way. I don't have a pop shield or anything like this, so I just do the kind of point the microphone at your mouth technique, which works reasonably. Um... <laughs> Pondervim is, is claiming his authority as the normal AV guy, saying, it is fine. But I've moved it a little. We'll see how that works. If um, if you have issues, let me know. Third of all, is saying is not hearing that there. Darius is hearing it. That is really weird. I wonder if Twitch is fucking around with our stream quality at all. Like the audio quality. That would suck. Maybe they're being too aggressive on that. Hmm. There are dropouts occasionally when they are switched. No fucking way. No dropouts for Teleport. Very strange. Um, now it's fine again. Oh, oh. Do keep me informed on that. That's really interesting shit and very annoying. There's a few things that are kind of like... You may have noticed I'm not announcing the streams on Twitch recently. And that's simply because when I went in to do the normal events thing... Um, there just wasn't a programming section anymore. There was like a beginner's programming and creative is was changed or something like this. I, it got very confusing, so I just stuck to doing the announcements on Reddit instead. Um, but yeah. And we got some a nice interesting freeze there as well. That was cool. Uh, that might be down to our uh, inverted stuff again. We 
kind of narrowed that down to the use of Compton, uh, but we're not 100% sure, so we'll see. But that's all right, nothing critical performance-wise today. We did our chase and, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, and as you mentioned, yeah, I wasn't here last week. Um, I was... I kind of it got, it kind of got down to the wire and I couldn't decide on something to do. Like, the Simni stuff that I want to do really is about using um, Intrinsic. So we could have just looked at CL Simni and we might do that on another stream. Just see what that library has. Um, the other thing would be to start wrapping up if that's not suitable. Basically, I'm sure CL Simni is great for... Um, coding as a user, but I really want to make a little compiler that's emitting the SIMD stuff. So there I really want to know literally just which instruction I'm using. I want it to map very, very closely. And I'm again, CL SIMD might do that, it might not. So we kind of need to review that, but I wasn't sure if that would take a whole episode. Um, and I don't, ha don't, I don't have any SIMD code that needs written right now. Like there's nothing desperately needing um, like that kind of performance tuning. So I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I just kind of, I just, just had to bail, bail in the end. Um, let's, um, let's have a look. Bear with me one second, I just want to go blow my nose. Oh, I should have really done that before the stream. Smart. Okay. Let's get going. So the we found out that there is a thing called a stencil buffer, um, and it's just an image. And in our like Keppel talk, that means it's a GPU array uh, which is backed by a texture. Um, the default frame buffer may have a stencil buffer. Um, okay, and user defined frame buffers can attach. Uh, stencil formatted images, either depth stencil or stencil only, uh, to the GL to the stencil attachment. So I th that's basically what we did when we um, just did make FBO with this uh, S keyword here. We're saying give me something with a stencil attachment because we had D as well. It had to be a depth stencil. So that's what we've got. Okay, if the current frame buffer has no stencil buffer, then the stencil test will always behave as if it's disabled. Cool. If there is a stencil buffer, that buffer has a certain bit depth. This specifies the number of stencil bits available. Okay. So it seems that the main option here are 8-bit stencils. So we just have a byte. That's cool. Hmm. Right. Okay, so the fragment stencil value. And that was something that was mentioned up here. The... Fragment stencil value is tested against the value in the current stencil buffer. If the test fails, the fragment is culled. So, um, yes. Value is usually defined. Okay, so yeah, this is this is what I don't understand. Where does a fragment get its stencil value from? Each fragment has a stencil value, which is an unsigned integer. Okay. The stencil test operation will test this stencil value against the value from the current Frame buffer at the fragment's position. Yeah, that makes sense. But where does it? Where where do you set that value? This value is usually defined by the same function that st sets the stencil test below. Okay, this means that every fragment from every primitive for every object in a draw call gets the same fragment stencil value, with the front back face point noted below. Okay, so we're going to find out what all that stuff is very soon, and then we'll go and find how I exposed it in Keppel. <laughs> I hope I did it okay. This is one of the ones that if it if it crashes, like it may end up being a short stream. We'll see. I'm sure it'll take me long enough to get through it that it'll it'll still be an episode, but uh who knows? Okay, horn. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Ponder Pimp. Um So he is human after all. Interesting. How dare you? Um Need more proof. No proof. Only proof. Um, so what are we doing? Okay, to enable uh, stencil testing, call GL enable on GL stencil test. I'm sure I've wrapped that up. When rendering to a frame buffer that has no uh, has n blah, that has no stencil buffer, no a stencil buffer, 
Uh, stenciling will always behave as disabled. Yeah, we covered that already. Stenciling operations take into account the f fact that triangles have two sides. Therefore, a sten all stencil tests and operation functions have two sets of data, one for the front side triangles and one for the back. Which side is used usually depends on whether the fragments generated from the primitive came from the front or back face. Okay. So it's going to be front face for us, for us. So we want to look at setting that. These functions can take a face parameter which specifies which facing state is set by that function. This face can be GL front or GL back, or you can set both sides at once with front back. So we've got to be careful when we're dealing with this stuff not to get it confused with um, front face, back face, or um, FBO targets. You can have front and um, back on the default frame buffer. I think. I can't remember very well. Let's have a look. Yes. Left, right, front, back, front and back. Um, these are the four images if you're doing stereoscopic stuff. Yeah. Okay. So we got to make sure not to confuse it with that. We'll see. I think that's going to be okay. Um, partially because Keppel hides that fact from you. When you when you use um, FBOs in Keppel, they, they have the numbered um, color attachments. And we also make the default frame buffer use that scheme rather than having a separate scheme like GL does. Okay, so for primitives that have no facing, the front side stencil state are also always used. Oh, I guess lines and points wouldn't have a facing direction, so that makes sense. The stencil test itself is set by this function, stencil func separate, where you can specify the face, you can specify which func, which I guess is something down here, um, a reference, the ref, and a mask. The ref defines the fragment's stencil value for all fragments generated for the given facing. The fragment stencil value will be clamped to the range defined by the stencil buffer's bit depth. Okay, yeah, so do something that's only 8 bits in size. Um, the first step of the stencil test is to get the destination stencil value from the stencil buffer called DS. Uh, this is an unsigned integer value. The fragment stencil value will be called FS. The first step is to perform a bitwise AND. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll end up setting these to 1 to begin with. Um, they get anded together. So this basically allows us to control which part of this we're using, it seems. Um, this is how it's used to mask off certain stencil bits, reserving them for different condition tests. This results in two masked unsigned integers, FM and DM. Oh no, no, that's not right. Um, okay, so the the next step is to form a bitwise AND with both FS and DS against the mask parameter for both. Okay, so there's a mask parameter that lets... Okay, the mask parameter lets you control which bits of these two things, of these two masks we're using. Okay. Or are these two value. Oh man, that, that's already starting to lose me. There's just a lot of, lot of stuff here. Okay, so la la la. Let's just just kind of skip through that and we'll get to it. Then the stencil test itself. Um, Median says Mike switched. Okay. Well, the that's really strange. All right. Let's let's just check and see what the inputs registering here. Sounds, recording, same mic, nothing seems to have changed on that or on, Telepaul's not hearing it, and back again after half a minute. What the fuck? Okay, so I was too late to give any kind of real data on that, but Telepaul's not hearing it at all, and I guess some other people aren't hearing that, so it sounds like a Twitch thing, but that is, that is disappointing, I, uh, are they really, like, like lowering the audio quality rather than the video quality first. Pompey is saying good for me. Darius is saying not hearing it. 
weird, man. Oh, well. Yeah, Brymans is saying it's fine as well. Huh. Well, I'm sorry, Maddie, yeah. That's a, that's a bummer, but hopefully it's something related to... Um... Yeah, I mean, if, if Median's connection is dipping, then maybe Twitch is doing something to keep the video quality up and sacrificing something else, which is just... Bleh. <sighs> oh, well. I've got to do something, I guess. Okay, so there are some tests that are performed between FM and DM based on the funk parameter. And that's this one here. So ref is the value for all of the fragments. Funk is that funk thing. Face is which face we're parameters we're setting here. Mask. I'm not sure. Oh, wait, okay. Oh, hold on. This mask parameter must be the mask parameter they're talking about here. FS and DS was the... Um, the stencil value from the stencil buffer. And the fragment stencil values would be called FS. Ah, oh, that, that stuff kind of driving me a bit crazy. Because if this is the stencil values thing, and this is the stencil buffers thing... Um, Bitwise and both of these, fine. Against the mask parameter for both, which implies that both of them have a, a separate mask parameter. So which mask parameter is this setting? And why? Right, okay. So mask. Specifies a mask that is added with both the reference value and the stored uh, stencil value when the test is done. Okay, so no, this seems to be applying to... To both of them. All right, let's keep going. Um, the stencil test itself is performed between FM and DM based on the funk parameter. The test of the form um, FM funk DM, the master fragment value is on the left hand side. Okay. The available functions are okay, so. Then the stencil test is performed against FM and DM. That's the... Oh yeah, of course. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting confused with these short names. I wish they used to use slightly longer variable names here. Okay, so the destination value is ds, and this is fs. And then once they've been masked, it produces FM and DM, and then FM and DM is what we're using with the funk. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, cool. Okay, so there's something that's doing some comparison, um, and if they pass or fail, yada yada yada. Okay. If the stencil test fails, then the fragment is discarded. If the stencil test passes, like uh, um, other tests, like the depth test, might still discard the fragment. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that seems to be relating to, like, the actual test itself. Let's just have a look at what functions we have um, on the Keppel side for talking about this stuff. Um, so let's just do Keppel and bring everything up and then look for anything with stencil involved. There's current stencil params. And there's depth stencil format p, and then there's make stencil params. I'm guessing that's going to be useful soon. Um, these are these seem to be stencil functions, and some other stuff there I don't understand. Okay, well let's just start with um, current stencil params uh, for front. Okay, and what do we do front and back? Okay, so it just returns both of them. That's fine. So we've got um, stencil parameter objects in Keppel. That's not a GL thing, so it's not backed by a GL object, and it's not something you're going to have to free. But it is something that... Um, it is something we just have used to group things together. 
See, I'm not sure what this stuff is down here. I guess we'll get to the keep stuff soon. But we have the test here, which is currently set to never. Uh, the value is set to zero and the mask is set to zero. So value must be the value that all of the fragments being produced are going to be given. Mask it allows us to select which bits from yeah which bits from this value and the destination value are we going to test against and then test is the function we're using to compare them maybe let's just have a look at um make uh stencil or params yeah just looking at the um signature down here it seems to be the same thing test value mask and then these things whatever they are um i guess we'll get to keep see those soon but that, um, by setting those um, parameters, by making one of those parameter sets, it seems like that replaces using this and enabling stenciling in general. Um, so what I think we would do is we would, um, we use this for querying and then we go set f like this. And so if we've made our own stencil params, we can shove them here and that will update the stencil params for the next draw. Possible. Okay, stencil operations. If the stencil test fails, then the fragment is discarded. Um, yes. Oh, okay. No, wait. If the stencil test passes, other tests like depth, uh, depth test might still discard the fragment. Normally, discarding a fragment means that it has no visible effects. However, the stencil buffer can be updated even from discarded fragments. If the depth or stencil test discard them. Um, ah, okay. Recall that the stencil and depth test are normally on the last per sample processing steps that can discard fragments. However, if fragments just happen early, which is something that can happen, even if the fragment shader discards the fragment, the stencil buffer can still be modified. So this is the bit I don't know about yet. Like it seems like we've got we've got ways of saying what the value will be and what the operation will be. But that doesn't seem to specify how we get stuff into the stencil attachment of the FBO in the first place. <laughs> That's all right. We're just getting updates from the uh, on the microphone situation. Yeah, we're um. I tell you what, I'm going to leave the microphone settings open on this machine just so I can see if they do go jank. All right. Let's have a look. Right, so where are we? God, this gets this gets heavy really fast. It's like with depth testing. It's just there's so much to it to understand it fully. There's, there's probably not that much for the like when you're trying to do simple cases, and we'll have a look at Learn Open Jail soon and see what, how one way of using it, is what one way of using it is. The words. Okay, so the stencil test fails. These are the, the things that can happen. Um, the fragment will uh, be discarded. Fine. Remember that the stencil test happens before the depth test, so the results, um, the result of that is never computed if the stencil test fails. Fine. The depth test passes, the stencil test passes, but the depth test fails. The fragment will be discarded due to the depth failure. Yes. If the depth test is disabled, then this will never happen. Fine, that makes sense. So that's kind of normal behavior. Uh, the stencil test passes and the depth test passes. If the depth test is disabled, this is always assumed to pass. Wait. Okay, so these are kind of business as usual. This is the only difference. To define how the stencil value in the frame buffer is modified in each case. In each in each case? Okay. So I guess um, it's really weird. Like how do you because normally what I'm used to with FBOs is you have to take an FBO and you have some attachments and then you write into those, they get modified, and then you bind those as textures. Um, to read from in another in another stage and then you do stuff with that data and then write into either the default frame buffer and yet another frame buffer but you don't 
attach a frame buffer to read from it. You only ever attach to write from it. And this kind of sounds like you can be modifying and affecting at the same time, which is weird as fuck. That can't be right, but I just don't know. It's very strange. There's a stencil operation. Okay, to define how the stencil value in each frame buffer is modified in each case. Um, use the following function. Okay. The parameters sfail, dpfail, and dppass define the stencil update operations to perform in the three cases above respectively. Ugh, okay. Each case can use any of the following operations. Current value here means the value already in the stencil buffer. Okay, this is where keep comes in. So keep zero, increment, decrement, invert, replace, increment wrap, decrement wrap. When we looked at the current stencil params, each of them had this on stencil test fail, on stencil pass depth, on stencil pass and depth test fail, on stencil path and depth test pass. These are the things that we're going to do to the values. Um, Taylor Paul is saying, now the stream is frozen. It's cursed. It's fucking cursed. But everyone else is saying it seems fine. Yeah, it's problem roulette night, Ponopim, you're spot on. So let's is saying, for me, also long freezes. Whoa, okay. You know what, guys? Hang in there a second. Let's um, bring up Twitch and see what... I, w I just want to know... Okay, so... My current bitrate's looking good. Um, how do I get a slightly longer view at the bitrate uh, streaming tools? Is that something I have? I remember I had something set up for this kind of stuff. Um, uh, that's not what I want. Um, stream... Is it Twitch stream um, bitrate graph? I can't remember what service that is. Um, Twitch Inspector, that's it. Haven't used this in a while, so I'm not sure if I remember logins and crap like that. Sorry there's nothing going on the screen for you right now, but... Let's see if this can give us some things. Just authorize... Yep, yep, yep. Let me in. Okay, so the graph I've been sitting for the last... Um, well, yeah, I've, I've been sitting since 7.50 uh, between... Um, yeah, about three 200 kilobits per second. The very lowest it dipped down to was uh, 2 900, but still respectable, like 30 frames a second whole way across. It seems to be all right. So I'm thinking my upload at least is fine. That's not telling. Um, that's not telling us what Twitch is doing with things. <laughs> We're at 14 viewers. Yeah, that's why. That's it. We're just killing this service. Who knew? Like, we put Lisp in the title, so they're like, ah, maybe like three people maximum. Okay. So these seem to be the functions related to writing, and this is somehow related to reading. Yeah, it's strange. Okay. Oh no, this is the end of the article. That really doesn't help. Okay, something is very... Like, this feels like we're missing information here. So I don't like this. There's also a write mask thing down here. Is this related to stuff, or is this something separate? No, this is something else. We'll get back to that another day. Okay, stencil tests. Da, 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 da. That's what we were talking about, stencil function. Okay, right. That was confusing. Let's get back to this and see what we can ascertain from here. How is the text size for you guys on that? Let's see if we can put it there. We can shift it over a bit. Okay. Okay, so this is just saying later on there's a stencil test. Hooray! The stencil test is based on the contents of another buffer called a stencil buffer. We know that. That's good. We made one of those. A stencil buffer usually contains 8 bits per stencil value. Um, that amounts to a total of 256 different stencil values per pixel of fragments. We can then set these stencil values to our liking um, 
And we can discard or keep fragments whenever a particular fragment has a certain value. Cool. Right, so that all makes sense. So, they have this example here. I'll flip the colors, so it's grayscale, I'm sure it's not too bad. Ah, okay. Okay, the sensor buffer is clear. It's first cleared with zeros, and then an open rectangle of ones um, is set in the sensor buffer. That's what they're doing here. The fragments of the scene are only rendered uh, wherever the stencil value contains a one. So how do they do this? Um, stencil buffer operations allow us to set the stencil buffer at specif specific values whenever we're, we're rendering fragments. By changing the contents of the stencil buffer uh, while we're writing, we can, well, sorry, while we're rendering, by changing the contents of the stencil buffer while we're rendering, we're writing to the stencil buffer. In the same or following render iterations, we can then read these values out to discard or pass certain fragments. Um, when using stencil buffers, you get um, you can get as crazy as you like, but the general outline is followed. Enable writing. That's something we need to know how to do. Um, render objects, which is doing this bit. So we're going to um, enable writing and then draw this. And so write that into the um, stencil buffer. Then disable writing um, to the stencil buffer. And render other objects. This time, yeah, this time discarding certain fragments based on the contents of the stencil buffer. Fine. By using the stencil buffer, we discard certain fragments based on the fragments of other drawn objects and scene. Fine. Yeah, that seems reasonable. You can enable stencil testing by doing this. From that point on, all rendering calls will influence the stencil buffer in one way or another. So this seems to be write or read. Um, so... I'm not sure exactly when um, stencil stuff is turned on in Keppel. I'm actually just going to go and dive into the code and have a look because it's going to be quicker. Uh, stencil. So we got two things. We've got mask. Okay, so there is a function called stencil mask. And we're going to do front and back. Okay, so yeah, so we've got 255 is set to both. Um, and I guess we can just set that. Yep. And then we have a set F, which is, we can pass in a stencil mask. I'm not sure what one of those is. It is an unsigned byte eight. Okay, fine. So that is just an integer. So I guess we can do this. Right. And then we can look at the stencil mask. It's 100 now for both. And then we'll set it back to 255. Oh, that's interesting. Did you notice that? Bug. It's returning no value. That's no good. The return value of this should be stencil mask. Why is that not happening? Okay, when we do this, this is getting... This is getting handled by a compiler macro, maybe? Um, slime, macro expand, all. Ah, that didn't help. Um, okay. This function should return mask at the end, and mask is the value we passed in, which was 255. So this one at least should work. But there might be something this compiler macro is doing that is not cool. So here we go. Right, let's just have a look at the face. It's either front and back. Okay, so it gets getting the GL enum ahead of time. So we've got the enum here. Symbol P enum. Okay, so if enum is... Yeah, otherwise it just leaves it as default. So it'll either be a number or it's going to be whatever the original symbol was. So if it's a symbol, then we just return whatever hole was and which will end up calling this function. Um, otherwise, we've got apply stencil mask. I bet this is it. Keppel context, what? What the fuck?
oh, if someone's passed in the Keppel context, then we expand to this. Otherwise, we expand to this. Yeah, and this is a thing to get the Keppel context. Okay, that's fine. Um, but I'm assuming, yes, apply stencil mask returns values, which is no good. That is not what we want. Um, so, I don't think there's any advantage to us not um, having this return the value. So let's just have a look at this. Who calls? Both of these are set. Okay, so it's called from um, some state restoring stuff. And yeah, okay, this should definitely uh, just return stencil mask. So this is a quick fix. I'll be back to chat in just a second, see what's going on. And yeah, then we're just going to return the mask. Okay. Yeah, now setf actually returns the value. Good. Let's get that fix into master. Okay. Um, setf of oh, stencil mask return values to see. Um, oh no, we've still got enough space here. Um, pile macro. Cool. Yeah, lots of people are having issues then. Drops audio, video, switch to separate network, still wonky. See you, so let's good luck. That's interesting. Hmm, have to find out what's going on there. I'm hoping it's just one of the times that they're... I wonder if we're just deprioritized a bit because we're small or if they're just having some issues today. Maybe there's a massive event going on and they're prioritizing something else. Who knows? Anyway, there seems to be a function called stencil mask where we can set and get the current stencil mask, which is interesting. And that is calling stencil mask separate. So let's just look at what that is in here. And so mask. Oh, come on now. <laughs> and stencil ops um, separate and stencil funk separate. Why doesn't it mention stencil mask separate? <laughs> Why is that not a thing? Uh, mask. Really, it's not going to mention stencil mask. No, nope, it's not there. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. Let's just make sure that this isn't some optimization. Sorry, not some helper function in a CL OpenGL. No. Nope. This is a thing, a CL stencil mask separate. How strange. Okay. Specifies a bit mask to enable and disable writing of individual bits to the stencil planes. The stencil planes, oh, there's more than one. Um, initially, the mask is all ones. Controls the number of... Uh, Controls the writing of individual bits. Okay, I think we leave this as all ones because when we write to it, we do want to write all of it. Um, that seems to make some sense. I have this vague memory. Oh, let's have a look. Let me just look at um, closed this here. Why are you? Oh, that's special. Stencil. Stencil buffer support. Stencil texture support. Okay, that didn't help. I was really hoping that there'd be something here about... Okay, this is about write masks. GL stencil mask only controls updates to the stencil buffer. 
the mask in this GL stencil function controls what bits are ignored for the stencil operation. Okay, this is about writing into the stencil buffer. This is about selecting certain bits that are already in the stencil buffer to go into the operation. Yikes, man. I'm going to keep that open because I'm going to need to see that information again for sure. Okay, right, good lord. Okay, note that you um, also need to clear the stencil buffer each iteration, just like the color and depth buffer. I expect we do that automatically, actually. Um, if you're using uh, clear FBO or clear, um, that should just work. But who knows? We're, we're a long way off. We haven't even started writing code yet, so um, where are we at? Yeah, we're f nearly 45 minutes in. Jesus. Okay, so... Let's let's just um, go back to Kepledon examples. Let's go to moving triangles. Let's take this code and let's start our stencil basics. Got this. Okay. Paste this in. We're gonna actually make this text a bit bigger because I forget. Um, let's get rid of all this. This is a pipeline using inline GPU lambdas, which I do not want. Um, so I'm going to break these out into their own functions. Extend. I'm taking a VEC4. Extend. Taking nothing. So this is going to be our fragment uh, shader, and this is going to be our vertex shader. Cool. We just go stop loop, and then hopefully we can just do run loop again, and it should be back. Sweet. And just to make sure that. Um, we're getting something sensible. Let's just set this to white. So, okay. We're not going to need colors anyway because we're going to use this at the mask. So, yeah, let's go with this. Right. What happens now? I'm just going to move this down a bit. There we go. And what else? Cool. Okay, I think that's uh, that, that's our kind of basic code to get started. We're going to need some... Um, let's look at the uh, current stencil params. Ooh, shit. Okay, continue. Current stencil params for front, of course, yeah. Um, so we're going to need to make some new stencil params that actually do things. And we want to... Well, the first thing we actually need to do, we're going to need an FBO... So let's go and find our temp zero from earlier. This guy will probably do actually. Let's just FBO now. FBO. Come on, Chris. Give me temp zero. Good. So now FBO holds our little FBO from that. Um, let's just make sure it gets initialized on start. Um, set f fbo is and then what did we do for that yeah we just made a really simple fbo with one color attachment a depth attachment and a stencil attachment we probably don't even need the depth and color attachments at all but we're going to leave them for now if we can get something working we'll just just go with what we get okay so having a look <laughs> Paul, Paul's now onto a 3g hotspot to phone Jesus Christ man I hope you're in a country where that doesn't cost you too much. According to a few people on Reddit, the quality options um, only pop up if Twitch servers have capacity during less peakful hours. All of this removed configurations from the user interface movement sucks quite a lot. Yeah, I hate that. That's... I've had that a couple of times on Twitch where I'm watching something and it just drops me down like quality and it's it's kind of at that point, like, may as well just stop watching. And it, like, because it flicks and I don't have a way of saying, like, this or nothing. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just ranting now. 
<laughs> right, okay, so we've got our FBO. Um, what happens if we just pull G on the attachment um, of FBO and it's the stencil attachment? What do we get? Ugh. Okay, so at the moment Kevl doesn't have an implicit way of um, pulling this down to um, something in Lisp. I should add that feature. Okay. Um, okay. Move out. Um, you issue. Add pull cheese um, support. Right, pull cheese support for stencil. So I can do this. Let's actually add it here. Oop. Come on. What? That is so strange. There we go. That's what I wanted. Let's do that for now. It's not exactly a good issue <laughs> right up, but it'll do for us. Okay, so, where are we? Okay, so, oh yes, we want to do a clear. So, we have our FBO, and when we step, we want to step the host and update the REPL link, and then we're setting loop, fine, fine, fine. We're doing clear, let's do clear FBO. And we're gonna clear FBO. Um, and doing that should um, clear out the was it clear the stencil uh, by default as well? So basically, whatever you have enabled, it'll um, keep track of that in a stencil mask value it's already prepared. And so when you do clear, it uses that, which so should be fine. Okay, so then um, then there's stencil mask, GL stencil mask. Hey, that's kind of like what we were looking at, right? Like um, when we we're having a look at stencil mask before. Yeah, stencil mask on its own allows you to set the bit mask, yada, yada, yada. This is setting it for front and back. I'm pretty sure. I can't. Ah. Yeah, here we go. GL stencil mask separate. Um, GL stencil mask sends both front and back stencil right masks to the same value as if um, this was called twice. Right, okay. As if, sorry, you know, if this was called with this, sorry. Uh, words. Right. So, each bit is written to the stencil buffer as is. Cool. So that's going to write to the stencil buffer. It'd be really nice to read from the stencil buffer so we could write the um, results out. I expect there's a way of doing that, I just don't know how. Um, I wonder if that's the thing. Sampling a stencil. So sampling a stencil texture. Yeah. So. Yeah, let's have a look. The problem is that you're running into depth and stencil is totally obble combination of data. The first 24 bits are depth and the last um, remaining bits are an unsigned integer. Okay. You will actually never be able to sample both of these things using the same sampler uniform and here's why. There are reasons apparently. Okay, let's skip those just for the sake of time. Okay. Oh, damn. Okay, so you would have to write. Interesting. So you can use it as an unsigned sampler 2D and then read it? Okay, that's... 
let's, let's not dive into that rabbit hole just now. Um, man, this is too much white. Sorry, I'm gonna have to switch uh, switch colors again because I'm. It's burning my eyes. Okay, so. Ah, if you set it to zero, it effectively disables rights. That's interesting. Ah, okay. So... We want the... We're going to try and test the equivalent of this. So equal, one, and this mask. So all of the things here will produce a value of one. This is the mask... Um, for this is the mask that is used against both this and the value that's in the destination that they're bitwise anded before this test is run. I think that's what the other thing said. Okay, so so let's just yeah, let's just say if they equal, you pass, and if not, yeah, let's basically do this. Let's try and find out how you do that. Let, uh, da, 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 da. Do you defo um, stencil brands? It's been so long since I've been writing lists, but it's really, it's really bizarre. Actually, we can just do this here because it doesn't um, require a context to, to do this. Make stencil params. Um, we'll say equal. Um, you can, I think. I can't remember how they, uh, how I did this before, but I think I had an option to pass in either keywords or functions, and I had like dummy functions that would represent the thing, and you could call the function, and you would get to if you wanted to try out the test. But I have no idea what I named that. Then let's have a look at let's just have a look at never. Yeah. Okay, so these functions are not used for general day-to-day -day coding. They're used in place of GL functions in blending and stenciling to allow us to attach documentation to them to indicate that they have functionality and to allow users to read their code and see roughly what they equate to. Okay. What does equal become then? Oh, no, I guess we just use equal from a common list there. That's funny. Let's see if that works. Let's just do equal. Uh, the value is going to be 1. Are these keywords? They probably are, aren't they? Yeah, so test is this. Value is 1. Um, mask is... Um, yeah, 255. And then what do we do? These ones, before we were looking at, was about writing stuff. Like, we want to say when the stencil... When, the, when we pass the stencil test, we want to write, I think. Depth test pass. So DT, or D, I think it was called DP or something like this. Let's have a look. This tells us whenever a stencil value of a fragment is equal to the reference value, the fragment passes and the test is drawn, otherwise discarded. But stencil funk only describes what OpenGL should do with the, con the content of a stencil buffer, not how we actually update the buffer. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is where stencil op comes in. We've combined these in Keppel, but yeah. Into parameters. The stencil op uh, contains three options, which we can specify for each of the arguments. And what's going on down here? Yep, uh, Darius is spot on there, Paul. It's just uh, the window manager. I made a little script, which just calls out to Compton, which is a standalone uh, window compositor and it's got an invert option which is great so yeah that's uh that's how i do it. it lets me do per window as well which is really nice i don't have that on windows or on mac which is rather annoying it's so useful it's, it's like having to switch that whole monitor all the time sucks because a lot of things that have light themes or dark themes, some of the times you can't pick, especially on websites. And then you're having to, if you have two things side by side, it looks like garbage. Oh, it's just really annoying. Just let you, let the person pick which window.
yeah, so we're, now we're talking about what happens when, like, when do we write? On fail, on depth, yeah, on stencil fail, on depth fail, on de uh, stencil and depth pass. Um, and then we can do this. Basically, we want to write, replace, when we pass, right? The default stencil op is keep, keep, keep. So whatever the outcome of any of the tests, the stencil buffer keeps its values. The stencil behavior does not update the stencil buffer. So if you want to write um, to the stencil buffer, you need to specify at least one uh, different action for any of the options. So using the GL stencil and stencil func and stencil op, we can precisely specify when and how we want to update the stencil buffer. And we also specify when the stencil test should pass or not. Pardon me. But no example. We had an example for this one, but not an example for this one. Okay, so we'll have to look at this code down here. That's kind of annoying. I hope we'd get. I was hoping we would get to see this because this is quite a simple, nice example. But instead, we're going to do this outline example instead. We're going to do our own thing. We're going to try and do our mask, but we're going to look at this code to see if we can get any clues. Okay, so we set the stencil func to GL always before drawing. Okay. Right, always was the test, right? Where's where are the tests? No, this is keep God damn it, where's always? Is this the first time it's mentioned? Yeah, it is. God damn, okay. Oh no, it was mentioned here. Okay, yeah, this is about the, the test. Never less equal always. Okay, so we're gonna say that we start off by saying first pass stencil params are going to be, and then we'll do second pass and we'll come up with these soon. Okay, so the first one we want to always pass. So every um, every fragment for every triangle is going to pass the stencil test. We've given each of these a stencil value of 1. We've got a mask, which is just 1, so it's not going to affect anything. And then, see, I would have thought then we want to write to the um, stencil buffer, which in my head means... Um, on stencil um, pass depth test pass cool um, and then we would go like replace or something like this whoops hopefully we can use that um, like now I'm looking at it I mean it's nice to be able to like pass these as functions um, and assuming that you know like like it's kind of cute but I think I might just change them back to keywords I've got that in a couple of places in Keppel and I'm not really sold on it um, yeah anyway <laughs> okay the stencil operation must be one of the following never always blah 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 we are using always. Oh, does it not like that? I wonder which it is this that's having a problem with, right? If I do this. No. Ooh, shit. I think that's another bug. Okay, so it's seeming to be testing this. Oh, wait, okay, so the bug is not in... Okay, there's something here called stencil replace. Right, now I'm just going to change this to be using keywords because this is getting confusing. Yep, this is solidifying my opinions on how I want this API to be. Let's just try that. Okay, that worked. Fine. Um, the semantic meaning of these, blah, blah, blah. 
Okay, so let's go down to where we started off. Set the stencil function to GL always before drawing to the outlined objects, updating the stencil buffer with ones wherever the object fragment is rendered. Yes, but that, doesn't that mean you have to specify the op as well? Yes, here we go. Stencil test, op, keep, keep, replace. That's exactly what we've done, right? And so... Yeah, that's good. I'm just going to have a quick look in um, the ASD file here because I want to know if I'm using uh, with setf, which I am. That's good because I'm going to need that function in a second. Well, that macro, sorry. Um, then what I'd like to do is I would like to say down here before we render stuff, we're going to go uh, with setf um, and we're going to setf the current stencil params. Um, for front and back, because why not, to be um, first pass stencil params. Right. And all this macro does is it um, is going to set this at the beginning of um, this block, and then it is going to set it back to whatever it was originally at the end of the block. And so then hopefully I can compile this and no, what didn't it like? Apply stencil params, ouch. Okay, then the value nil is not of type stencil params. That is true. Who is trying to apply nil to this? And why are they trying to apply nil to this? That's a very good point. That, sh that isn't allowed anyway. Oh wait, def parameter, okay. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Deal with you later. Um, okay, let's continue. Continue, continue, continue. We can, can we not? Okay, so... First pass stencil programs has to have be something now. Yeah, totally. Um... Current stencil params, have we broken it? For front and back. No, nope, they're still there, that's good. Let's abort and see what happens. Let's bring the REPL up over here again because it's just getting confusing with everything flying around. Um, we compile this. Let's just stop. I actually really don't like that being a local variable there. I'm just going to change this out. One second. Um, def var running um, to be nil. Um, and then I'm just going to place anywhere that says running to be running. Anywhere I was going, I was running. Okay, there we go. Okay, that is a bit weird. Nil is not a value of stencil params. I 100% agree with that. It is not. But who is trying to set you to nil? It's implying that this is nil, and it's not. It's really weird. So if that's... I mean, it's got to be to do with this, so let's just set that out and say continue. Well, now everything's happy. How annoying. Yeah, and the current stencil params for front and back are also set. So, that's kind of interesting actually, because this one's going to be returning I don't think these are the same object, are they? Not like that, they're not. Okay. Thank you, this, and two. No, they're not the same. Okay, so... Let's just try setting front for now. It is possible I'm screwing something up. Let's do this. Okay, so that isn't arguing now. Which is nice. 
hopefully we're writing into well no actually I suppose we're not writing into the our FBO yet because we've not bound the FBO let's just move this down here we'll say with FBO bound um, and we're going to say FBO and now everything disappears there which makes sense um, now we're going to need something else to draw um, so let's go and look for another really simple thing there's a We could just, like, um... We could just draw a, um... A triangle or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I suppose that would be the simplest thing to do. Just a big old triangle. Um... It's gonna be pretty boring, but it'll do the job and we can put in something more exciting. Later. Um, def parameter, big try. Set f, big try. Oops. Okay. Let's move this down to another line so I can just do that. And it doesn't look quite so bad. Um, yeah, we can do this. Oh, I can just dump all this in. So we've got a struct up here. There's about a position and a color. How goofy. And then we've got this array down here. Let's get to the REPL and set that. That's good. Um, and then it does stuff. And then we've got the Try the try frag and the pipeline. So we'll just take all three of those. We'll shove those down underneath our pipeline. No, I didn't like that. Oh, because we call it prog one. Whoops. Um, class two, and fix up prog one and say continue. Hopefully that's all right. And what else is going on? Teleport saying I'm using Compton with i3. Nice. Um, I don't want to run Compton just for that though. It's a per screen contrast. Which one do I get? I should have a look at i3 because it is like I I love having a tiling window manager. Um, but yeah, it's um I don't configure it that often. So the fact it's implemented using common Lisp really doesn't make a difference to me very often. Like it was nice writing like the functions that I needed using common Lisp, but otherwise, is it massive benefit? Like if I had something leaner, would that be better? Maybe there's something a bit more stable out there. I don't know. I haven't had big problems with um, Stump, so I'm not looking to change. But uh, yeah, it's something I'm considering at least having a play with those. Just a reminder of what trade-offs are, really. It is interesting. Okay, so... Oh, uh, yeah, we haven't made the stream for this guy yet, so... Um, so we're going to make another thing called... It's going to be called TriStream, and we're going to make... Let's put this here, because they're kind of related. Um make buffer stream from big try there we go um, and then try stream okay so let's just make sure that's done as well in the REPL okay cool okay so now we should be set up at least Let's just see if we can draw that triangle. Um, down here, um, we would just be doing a map G somewhere. Let's do it outside of this FBO. We go map G, um, pass to uh, with try stream. There we go. There's our triangle. 
So now we need to set things up so the mask actually takes effect. Um, not sure what that takes yet, we'll see. I mean, it, is, it could be as simple as having the FBO bound, but it's kind of interesting because if you have an FBO bound, you're then going to be rendering into the FBO. So, like, how do you do that? I guess we set the stencil params on the um, on the default frame buffer. Let's see what's going on over here. Median saying test always they expect keywords. Actually, they expect either keywords or functions. Um, it was something janky I've done in Keppel in a few places. Um, let me just go and, and bring that up. Uh, where is it? When you make stencil params, it goes and turns whatever it's given into an enum. And the way it does that is it checks to see, it's just a big conditional. So it's either um, the keyword keep or it's EQ to the function keep. Um, and that works. I mean, we can use that in a, we use that in a lot of places. Um, this allows us to have, for example, uh, when we look at depth test function, um, you see it actually returns the function less than. Um, and this is kind of cute in my head. I liked it because then you could test that function and see how it behaved, or you could look at the documentation for that function. Um, but it also, um, obviously, the GL, the CL open GL bindings only take keywords because they're mapping it to the enum. Um, but we do some funky stuff there. So that's a Keppel thing. Um, yeah. Prominent Mim saying, I3 is pretty cool and simple. Once simply configured, it simply works. That sounds pretty simple, as Asu says. Yep. Um, Teleport said, I've never tried Stump Window Manager. It's. I mean, I like it, man. Like, all all I wanted was um, something like Emacs, but for the window management stuff. I have been using EXWM on my laptop, um, but at the moment I can't switch to it using it for here because I really need to know how to say, "Hey, this buffer, never change that buffer," because and and the one with the what's got the camera over, never change that, never resize it, never change the contents of it, and I don't know how to do that in Emacs. It always seems like something is able to resize or move, or even with like some of the protected buffer stuff. I don't know. I, I never got it to work properly. Um, I would love to know how. How come that didn't work with always? I think because there are some stencil functions. This is where it broke down. Um, I think it did work with always. It didn't work with. Um, yeah, let me just show you actually. Um, where we? Where is it? Let's just copy this and do here, do second, change this to always. Yeah, that works fine. The problem we had was when we were um, doing, trying to do replace, because for some reason I didn't have it as replace like this. I had it as stencil replace like this. I don't know why. I don't know why. It was like at the time there was some reason that that made some difference, but fucked if I know now. Um, but I just don't like it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm two minds because I really like how, like, obviously how it looks is nicer. Like keyword, 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 keyword all the way down is kind of, uh, I don't know, a little uglier to read unless you lay things out properly. Um, and I again, I like that I have kind of dummy implementations for these. But what I hate is we're using up a function, we're using up a symbol for a function, um, and we export those symbols. So that's stealing symbols from other people, and a lot of them are very generic names. Never, always, keep. Oh yeah, that's why this is called stencil replace, because um, replace already exists as a function. And that means we couldn't attach documentation to it. So yeah, basically this is balls. I don't like it. Do not like it, Sam, I am. Teleport saying you can tell it where to put floating windows based on window ID. Yeah, I suppose I could look into having, yeah, the Keppel and stuff windows be floating windows. But that means stuff could be underneath it, which is a bit ugly for the stream because then you wouldn't be able to see what's going on. 
Not sure. Not sure. It's a tricky one. I would just like to tell Emacs that part of this is just off limits and you may not touch it. Um, yeah, but there doesn't seem to be a way. Maybe I can hack that. Maybe I can hack something together with X to, to do that. But I don't have any time for that right now. I, I'm so, so behind on stuff. Right, so where are we? Um, we've got some stencil params which we're using when we're writing stuff in. And then outside of that, we go back to default stencil params. Um, what are the what are the current stencil prompts? I keep forgetting. Um, oh yeah, always pass. So really, I want a second set of stencil parameters. I wonder if I can just let me just see if I could set the default. Set of the default. Actually, let's um. Actually, no, wait one second. I'm just, just yammering to myself here. Make stencil params. What do we get? We, do we get the default? No, we get never instead of always. And we get, but we do get keep. Okay. So make stencil params uh, with test being always gives us the equivalent. No, it doesn't. Um, value one mask 255. These look like they're the same. Okay, so this is um, defun restore um, default FBO grams. And we could just go with FBO bound. Um, how do we get the default frame buffer? There we go, default frame buffer. Oh, that's not a function, apparently. Nope, that is not a function. Okay, so how do I get the default frame buffer? Is it a... Nope. There should be a function to get that. I'm not sure what that is. Well, we can just write this from, do this from the, uh, the REPL for now. Okay, but instead what I want to do is I want to do get the current stencil params like this and I want to replace it. Set if with make stencil params where the test is, oh, it's just so nice to write it like that though. The test is equal, um, the value is I don't suppose these make too much difference. 255. Um, and then we just say keep for the rest. Will that work? No. Ugh. Unknown key argument one. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, two. Value mask. Okay, so now the current stencil params are. are this. Yep, there. It's the equal function. Um, Values one, mask is two five five. And let's just make sure we're still running. Yeah, we are still running. So why doesn't this work? What am I missing? Well I suppose we don't have an FBO bound right now. So Yeah, but of course we're back to the same problem. If I bind the FBO, then the stencil buffer like the stencil buffer will be attached, but the other things won't. So I kind of need to make a second FBO. Um, and then I suppose we could draw into that and then draw that to the screen. It's not the most satisfying thing. Let's see how they do it. So they do the keep, keep, replace thing. Um, they set the stencil funk to be always. They set the stencil mask to be, yeah. 255. Um, they draw some stuff. That's fine. Okay. Whew. 
You change the second pass to be e always, should it be equal? Um, test pass is different, test pass differs. Yeah, my first one is still always. My second one, I'm not actually using this yet. Um, this is still... is not being used. What I actually did in the REPL just here was I set the um, stencil parameters of the default FBO uh, rather than a user-defined FBO. Um, and I thought that would work, but of course we haven't got a stencil buffer attached right now. Unless... Hmm. Current... What is the thing for getting the current FBO? Why don't I know that? How do I get this fucking thing? Right, let's just go look at Kepel. It'll be in there somewhere. Uh, grip. Default F. Yeah, sure. Right, there is... It's in the context, at least. But I'm not sure if I've exposed that to the user in a sensible way. I would have thought so. Well, we haven't, we probably should. Yeah, there isn't a way to grab that, per se. Huh. That's a bit shitty. Let's go and add it. Um, let's make an accessor down here. So, uh, defen, what's it going to be? Um, default FBO. Um, the args is going to be an optional. Um, Keppel context. And the default value will be Keppel context. Um, and how does. I can't remember what the order of types things in, is in here. Let's just look at a defin somewhere else. Um, okay, so it's... Yeah, okay. Oh, that actually doesn't help, but never mind. Uh, let's just let's just see what the expansion is. Keppel context, Keppel context, Keppel context. This is the type. This is the variable name. This is the function that gets the um, context if you don't specify it. And then the result is going to be an FBO. And then what we're going to do is do some internal shit. So capital context. Or oh, where is it? Um, context. Ah, come on. Where's that grep? I saw it in there. Okay, with capital context slots. Um, we're going to get the yeah default frame buffer. There we go. And we're going to pass in the couple context. And then we're just going to return the default frame buffer. That should be it. Let's expand this and see what it comes to. Okay, so you're going to be either be, you've got a function which is taking or a couple context or null um, and returning an FBO. That is exactly what we want. I think that's fine then. Um, let's just go to package and go to keppel.fbo and actually there is already a thing called um, default fbo exported so oh it was default frame buffer was exported ah oh, that's kind of icky oh well, let's have a look anyway let's just try it default fbo there we go there it is um, and let's look at the attachment. I think you can call attachment on this. That would make sense. Uh, empty FBOs have no attachments. Oh. I guess attachment doesn't work on the default FBO. That is ugly. Okay. So maybe that's why we don't expose it. We should though. And it should. It should have those things specified. It's weird as well because you can see from the default FBO that it does have two color attachments. And those will be the front and back um, which make up, yeah, the, the default front, front back buffer. Um, but I guess attachment isn't going to let us get the stencil then, which I was kind of hoping for. 
Huh. Okay. Bums. Because what I wanted to do was I wanted to set the, the um, st the uh, stencil buffer for the default FBO. That didn't work. So what are we going to do instead? Um, let's have a look. They drew some things. Okay. The total object outline routine for our scene will look something like this. Enable depth test. Um, set up the stencil op, which we've done already. Clear, which we do. Uh, stencil mask, which we do. Um, no, wait. Stencil mask zero. Make sure we don't update this stencil buffer while drawing the floor. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, we're not worried about that. We're, we're only drawing um, the objects we're interested in first. They drew, draw the floor. Then they set the stencil funk to be always, like we do. Set it to 1 and uh, 255, which we do. We set the stencil mask to be 255. We also do that. Or we've also we just left it as default because it is that. Then they draw their two containers. Um, and that's them writing into the um, stencil buffer. And then... Ah, uh, yeah, they're not using FBOs in this at all. They're doing all of this on the... On the default. It's kind of interesting actually. Wait a second, they must be doing something with an FBO. Are they really just or maybe they're not. They maybe they're drawing just drawing twice. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, then they're disabling the depth test. And they're drawing the two again slightly scaled up. Huh. That is... That's one way of doing it, for sure. I really want to do it with an FBO, though. Fuck it. Okay, then we're going to do it with a sec second FBO. Let's just try it. Um... Get rid of all those. Let's get back to stencil basics. Let's just put a second FBO in and see what happens. Okay, so FBO2... FBO2 is going to be slightly different. Um, it's going to be... We're going to make an FBO. Um, it's going to have a color attachment, a depth attachment, and can we specify? I wonder if we can specify them together, like depth stencil. Sure. Let's do that. Um... The way I want to do it is, let's just try it out here, is we want to get the attachment from the first FBO, and we want to get the stencil attachment, because it's going to be the same for depth and stencil. Okay, so that didn't quite work. Um, yeah, I didn't like that. Okay, so expecting a pattern, or... That's a really ugly error, actually. That really doesn't help us very much at all. Um, no, I didn't like that. I thought you could just put in other images, and it should just work. Like, if I try and make an FBO... Just with the color attachment of the first one? Oh, it doesn't like that either. Interesting. Okay. Um, is it because it f we need to tell it... Oh, wait a second. Wow, what the, was that bullshit? Um, we would have to specify it like this. What the fuck is going on all of a sudden? Yes, that's how that would normally work. So when we're doing this depth stencil stuff, it would actually be... What the fuck is going on? It's like Peredits all of a sudden being very strange. <sighs> okay. It doesn't like DS. Fine. What if we just do stencil? Okay. That's kind of janky. We want to be able to set, set the depth and the stencil at the same time um, to use the same thing. So that kind of implies we want to. We have to do it like. It's getting very annoying. Yep. It's just. Being shit right now. Oh, man. Okay. That seems to be more like what we want, but that is very ugly. I do not... 
do not agree that it should be done that way. Um, really? It was like there was something in the buffer that was causing it to just... Pareto to just freak out. Do not like it, Sam, I am. Anyway, okay, so then we have a new FBO. Um, I'm really not sure if this is going to work this stream. It's going to be interesting. We don't have that much time left. And, uh, yeah. It's getting tight. Okay, so if we're going to do this, let's uh, get those second pass params and... See what we can do here. Um, we don't need this, we just need this. And that's not first pass params, that is second pass params. And then down here, uh, we want to clear the FBO, FBO. Oh shit, here's another problem. When we clear FBO2, it's going to clear the stencil that we've got attached to it, which is the one we're actually interested in. Um, how do we specify? I'm not sure if we have a way to specify individual attachments yet. Oh no, there is clear attachment. Yeah, clear attachment is not yet implemented. Shit. That's annoying. <sighs> that sucks. Okay. In that case, we need to just call GL clear um, ourselves. So let's do this GL clear. And then it is. I never remember what this is, so it's going to be clear is the FBO clear mask. Whoops. Clear mask. Let's see what we do in here. Um, update clear mask. Let's see what we write in there. Okay, so it's color depth bit, depth buffer bit, um, stencil buffer bit. Is that those are the things? Let's just have a look at geo clear actually. Geo clear. We will get this done, god damn it. Yep, those are correct. Oops, no, we want to get to stencil basics, and here we're gonna do um, color buff a bit, depth buff a bit. Stencil buff a bit. All quiet in chat. I hope you're all still there. Um, let's have a look. Yes, and then we need uh, second pass params. We're going to say uh, with set up. In fact, uh, stupid already. We don't want to clear the step the stencil buffer, um, and we do want to set the current params for. Ah, for this FBO. Okay. This might be it. Problem is, it is going to then... Oh, wait. No, we're not running. Apparently we are. Okay. Now it's really hard to tell if we're running or not. What the fuck? Okay. <sighs> not so good. Where are we? Equal is not type as uh, not type unsigned byte thirty two. Very true. Very true. Um, that is another bug. Oh, we're finding bugs everywhere all of a sudden. That's rather annoying. So let's look at second pass stencil params. Yeah, the mask is 255. So, and the test is 514. So we do have the enum value there. It's like it's reading out one of the uh, user helper functions. Because if I do stencil um, params and test of the above, you see it returns the function object. But that's not what's actually stored in here. We store only the enum. So that tells me that when, where are we? When we're setting this, for some reason, we 
one of these is using stencil params. Okay. This is interesting. How did this not happen sooner? This I really don't get. Oh, fuck me. That's very confusing. Anyway, um, GL function, stencil func separate. Shouldn't be using these. These are the ones that convert the enums back into funks. We should be using their internal equivalents. Which is this. Again, how, how the fuck have we been running any code if that wasn't right? That's really upsetting when that kind of stuff happens. Because then I just don't know where we are. Right. So again, we're not seeing anything, but that's kind of expected. Um, if we do program and we get rid of it, we do see the triangle, so maybe that's working correctly. Um, we need a little pass-through shader. Um, or maybe we can just do draw texture. Um, let's get the... Let's have a look. Def uh, temp2 is going to be... Um, oh, we'll do that in a minute, actually. Do the attachment of FPO2. And we'll get attachment 0, which is the color attachment. Uh, we'll do attachment text, which gives us the texture. And then if we sample that, um, then we've got a sampler that's reading from that texture. And then, yeah, let's set that to temp2 for now. And then down here, just before we swap, we'll just go uh, Nineveh. Do we have Nineveh? Oh, Nineveh is not loaded yet. Damn, I can't use <laughs> Fuck it. I'm going to just bring this in because we haven't got much time left. So Nineveh. We won't be able to push this example tonight because I'll need to replace this code, but... We are still streaming. That's good. But yeah, we've uh, we've got to that normal point in the stream where I'm running out of time and I'm just starting to move quickly and break things. Uh, <laughs> so it becomes less and less uh, comprehensible of what, what's actually going on. Uh, let's have a look. Wow. That's really special. Stop loop. Nineveh. Um, let's do draw texture um, and then we'll just do temp2. Ah, oh, come on. Run loop. Where are you getting that from? Oh, really? That's suggesting that host step isn't working, which means that something reloaded the host like Nineveh oh god oh I know why that sucks too that means Keppel doesn't really like being reloaded um interesting I don't even know how to write that up as an issue right now let's desperately try and claw this back to life um no that's not gonna work yet no. right Bring up the REPL. Oh, for fuck's sake, come on, man. <laughs> Deja vu, always, yep. Back as law confirmed, absolutely. We're, uh, we're running low on time. Oh, after this, I'm just going to get... Have a drink and play some Final Fantasy IX. And I'm in need of that right now. Well, an alcoholic iced tea and nothing else to, to care about, which is great. A couple examples. It's not to say I'm not loving this, because it it's it's really fun to be with you again. I, I hate taking those, uh, skipping those weeks, really. But um, let's just see if we can get this damn thing to play. Okay, so temp 2 isn't going to be around, so we can get rid of that. Fucking wow, it hates everything. Okay, um, let's do that. And let's say Keppel... Repl, get it over there, and then we can say run, loop, um, and then apparently it's it's running, um, but we need to go back and find out what we did to 
Yeah, we took FBO2, we did that. Yeah, we did that, and then we set it to be... Um, no. Come on. Defo. To be that. And then we can do this. <laughs> it looks the fucking same. God damn it. Okay, so nothing's happened. So, clearly I don't understand what the fuck I'm doing um, with regards to the stencil stuff. <sighs> damn. I, yeah, I, th I think that's going to kind of be the end of the week. I don't think we're going to get it working in the next few minutes. But, feel free to ask questions. Um, and I'll p keep poking at this for the next few minutes. If you've got any ideas of what we could be doing wrong, um, other than using Keppel, um, then I would love to hear it. So, god damn, man. I really need to make the uh, default frame buffer more accessible in Keppel. Um, because it's kind of shitty that this has actually been... They are able to do it just in a few lines by modifying the um, default frame buffers stuff. Or just... Uh, let's see, they're not even using... It's weird. They're taking advantage of the fact that they're drawing once, and then they're drawing scaled up, which I guess is the outer box. Okay, yeah, so they draw the, drew the first thing and set all the inside to one, and then they drew it slightly bigger, uh, with it being not pink, whatever the opposite of pink is, that kind of bluey green. Um, and they drew it slightly bigger, but then they masked out everything that was here, where the ones were. So that makes sense. And we could do something like that, I suppose. Could we modify this in a few seconds to do that? Uh, probably not. How much time we got left? 13 minutes. What I don't get is why... What haven't we set? So in my head, what we've got here is we've got something which... <laughs> this sets the stencil params. Um, so the first stencil params are... The stencil test always passes, so for every fragment, um, we are going to do replace with one. So it gets zeroed out, and then we replace everything for for one, wherever those uh, triangles are in the first pass. Then we go out of scope from there, um, and we unbind this FBO, and then we bind FBO2, and we clear FBO2 on its color and depth values, but not the stencil. And the reason we don't do stencil is because FBO2, if all was actually done correctly, should be sharing the depth and stencil uh, attachments from FBO here. And I know we're using S both times here, but because it's depth stencil combined, that should be fine. Um, assuming that is fine, don't really know. Um, Okay, so yeah, then we've got a new FBO here, which we've bound. And then we set the current stencil params to be the second pass stencil params, which means that the test is, if they're equal to one, um, yeah, it has, to, it has to be equal to be, to be a match, sorry. And the value is one, so we're trying to match. Yeah, it's one both times, so it's just a simple equality test. So then everywhere this triangle is, the value is going to be 1, and we're comparing that, and that should be it. As far as I understood, that would be enough to, to make this work, but it's not. I'm not getting it. Could it be the test pass difference earlier? Median, the test pass. Um... Um, I mean, I suppose we could set this to keep and just see if it has any effect. 
Hasn't had any effect yet, unfortunately. Oops. Stop loop. We're clear. It's definitely gone. Um, we run the loop. CLS. Yep, still there. Not having any effect, sadly. Shit. Why? Don't know. But that is kind of a where my understanding of this had got to. So, either this is vaguely correct and Kepler is doing something wrong with the FBOs, or I don't understand uh, this second part and I need to go and review this. Both of those are very possible. Um, see, they're doing this disabling of the depth test, but that's because they're they're not clearing between each of these. They they write the boxes and then they write the boxes again, so they don't want the depth test to be throwing away um, fragments because they want to write on top of everything else because they're doing an outline. Um, that's really interesting, but that's okay. First time, first time using something, it's not always going to work. They're using not equal rather than equal um, because they want to draw wherever is not um, marked with ones, where we want to draw wherever. It is what marked with ones, or actually we could do not equal as well. It were, but either way, it's not it's not making much difference now. I suppose we could set this to um, not equal, and the fact that that has no effect on the output kind of disturbs me. Um, I don't like that. It suggests to me that something is not playing right here, and uh, yeah, it is not coming to coming to me. Why? That's a bummer. Um, Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure what else to try. But we've got eight minutes. There's still time. Not much time, but time. Do we have to specify what happens on fail? Because right now it's keep. It's always keep, isn't it? what the uh, things are for this. And I haven't written documentation for it. Damn it, Chris. I hate it when we haven't done that. Oh no, this is what happens when you write. This is to do with writing. We're not trying to modify. Um, so that isn't right. It really is all down to this. And the test options are always and never there was an option to never succeed and that's what troubling troubles me like we're still here right apparently we've set the stencil parameters but it doesn't seem to be having any effect why is that let's make this a lot simpler let's just go back to um Let's just draw the triangle right here. Take out all this stuff. Um, so now if I comment out this line. What the fuck? Oh, right. It's uh, still drawing temp 2. Okay. So that's it. Def uh, temp three is make <sighs> stencil params, and we, our test is going to be never. Whoops, never. And then we're just going to go. Let's just again, once again, comment this out. Make sure it does go away, which it doesn't. Are you fucking kidding me? Man, this is so much more sensitive than our um, playing with uh, Vert's setup is. It's really annoying. Um, oh, it's because we've got an SLDB is still here. Oh no, that's from ages ago. That's definitely not that. Um, stop loop. 
run loop. There we go. Triangle is there. Triangle is gone. Fine. Um, temp3 with setf. Current stencil params. Front. It's going to be temp3. Why are you doing that? It's visible. And it's still visible. Right? Why is that the case? If those stencil parameters are current and we have a stencil buffer, which we assume we have, um, I'm actually not sure what the um, default setup is. Let's just have a look. Keppel SDL2, Keppel SDL2.lisp, um, depth. Stencil size. Make SDL context. Okay, so if I just go into Keppel and core. Oh, yeah, it's not going to be that, is it? It's going to be. Ah, uh, what's it going to be? Fuck, I need to go back to that file again. Make context function. That's what I'm looking for. And we're going to go to core, we're going to go grep, we're going to go make context function. It's not fucking there, this must be out here, because the host stuff is out here. I'm an idiot. That's the definition. That's some asserts. Go away. There's again some slots. That is some more tests. Stencil size, this is where it's actually called, cool. Stencil size, where do you come from? Stencil size is eight. So there should be by default a stencil buffer set up. So yeah, it seems like something else is actually wrong. Um, the front refers to which, um, yeah, the stencil params for the front face as opposed to the back face. So I suppose if we said back, again, that should make a difference, you know? Um, but it is not. So yeah, that, that suggests to me that we have... Um, there, there must be some problem with Keppel. Um, uh, yeah, it's not the back buffer in this case. It's the front or back of the triangle they're talking about. Back Front or back face of the triangle. Yeah, so I'm thinking that we have Keppel problems here. That's the only thing that kind of really makes sense to me right now as to why this would not be working unless there's like some really simple fucking... Um, no, I'm not seeing anything else. Nope. Because with this... When you go to set, you apply the stencil params, it should, it should be, let's have a look. This is doing all the stencil funk separate calls. Just a slightly disturbing thing here. Who enables stencils test? Where is that enabled? I don't remember seeing that anywhere. Let's just drop, drop back here and just go grep. Um, stencil test. I'm not seeing an enable for that anywhere. GL enable. Stencil test. That would be really embarrassing. If it didn't enable it, that would be so dumb. Ah, oh, but it's still there. Afraid not. 
Man, that would have been really cool if that was the thing. But it doesn't seem to be. Seems there are other fuck-ups that are going on that... Hmm. Ah, well. Okay. So, we reached uh, 10 o'clock and we did not succeed, but... That's it. It's going to happen sometimes. I'm actually really grateful that I've had a chance to play with this a bit more now. Um, it's starting to get into my head, but obviously there's some stuff I'm missing. So what I really need to do, I guess, is go through and do a straight CL Open GL example, and then trace through some of the code and just see what Keppel is doing in this place, because it's clearly not doing the right thing. But So thanks a lot for, uh, for hanging around anyway and uh, watching this one, and I'll be back next week. I'm not sure what we're going to do next week, um, we could have a look at CL Simdi. Um, also, something that has been cool though, like something that was cool, was earlier this week, um, Colton got linked, uh, from Tubbles are Good. I, I know him as this, but I think on Reddit he, he's, what was his name? Something Style. Yeah, Style Warning. Uh, so he's doing a kind of um, statically typed DSL um, using like Henley Milner type checking and all this kind of stuff inside Common Lisp. Um, that's got me really motivated to hack around on my compiler again. So if you're interested, we could have a poke around at doing some statically typed Lisp ourselves um, and just try and design something that we could use similar to something like this. Uh, but yeah, we'll um, we'll have a muse and I'll see um see how I'm feeling. Feel free to, to ping me any ideas as well. Um, sounds sick. Awesome. All right, then maybe we'll do that. All right, folks. Thanks a lot. Catch you next time. Ciao.